I'm gonna show you how to create this retro textile in Adobe Photoshop. Hopefully you enjoy. Let's get straight into the video. First, find a nice retro font. This one's called Eastlift. I'm gonna list some free ones on screen and in the description. I'm also gonna link a Pinterest board to color palettes as well as assets such as grids that you can use in your project. Right click on your text and go to blending options and then go over to gradient overlay. If you don't see these options, you can press the FX button and it'll show gradient overlay right here. Next, go to the gradient section and click on it. And now you want to find a nice color palette. You wanna double click on the color stop and select a color. So I'm gonna go for pink and teal, very similar to some of Miami beach colors. So the main characteristic of this text effect actually happens in the gradient. Usually you'll see this very hard edge or stop and basically a clash between two colors. So I recently saw this in the Thor Love and Thunder movie poster and you'll see this in a lot of different movie posters as well. So that's what we're basically going to have to create. So instead of using these two colors as the hard stop, we're going to use black and white or you can use darker or lighter variations of the colors. But here we're going to click to create a new point and we're going to create another new point. I'm going to double click on this color stop and make it black and then double click on the other color stop and make it white and now if we move the points together we basically end up with something like this now we have this hard stop in the middle the issue we have now is that black is taking over too much of the pink area so we're just going to move this point towards the right and now we get more pink and once you click on this point right here you can also see this diamond shape which helps you adjust this a little bit better as well and we're going to do the same thing with teal right here so i'm going to move the teal towards the left right here and now we're going to add a contour and bevel and emboss. So I'm going to check on it right now for contour, just leave it at 100 and for bevel and emboss, we're really just going to be working with the shading area. So everything else here should be the same. You want to turn down shadow mode and increase highlight mode. Basically highlight mode will just add this sort of white strip on the top or bottom of the text. So basically it adds like an artificial lighting source and you won't really be able to see it unless you choose a sharper gloss contour. So right now it's set at just a straight line, but if you go for something sharper, like up and down like these two presets right here you'll be able to see the difference so if you click on this preview you can actually adjust this so if you do want to make some adjustments you can do it here so I would choose a highlight mode that is screen or overlay. Overlay personally looks better as it doesn't stand out and you can still see the highlight, except it isn't purely white, which I do like how it looks like. Next, we're gonna add a stroke. So I like to keep it very small of a size. So right here, it's five pixels position as inside and everything else normal. For the color, you might wanna select something very similar to your color palette. So like pink, for example, you can even do white, uh, you can even do teal, or if you want, you can even go to gradient and then you can select the colors manually so that they sort of follow your gradient overlay so here we can select pink and then create another point and in the middle portion it's sort of white and then we can create another point that is teal and you can sort of move these colors around so that you see this stroke i made this color darker because if you just left it purely teal you wouldn't actually see the stroke so you do want the colors to differentiate a little bit. The last thing I'm going to do is apply a pattern overlay. So I actually made custom ones and paid channel members can actually get this project file as well as this custom pattern overlay. All you have to do is press the join button next to the subscribe button and you can get access to future project files and extra assets like this. Right now you can't actually see the pattern overlay because the gradient overlay is on top of it. So all you have to do is go to blend mode and change it to multiply. And now we're able to see what's underneath. And so here you can change the scale and then we have this sort of like rocky mountain look in order to create this pattern it's not that hard so here i created a very long canvas 4000 by 1080 and basically all i did was create something like this i basically created this with my pen tool just made a lot of like sort of points like this and then i applied a gradient overlay basically this gradient overlay goes from white to transparent. What that did was it made it mix into the white background. And then you can go ahead and select the marquee tool, highlight the entire canvas, go over to edit, define pattern, and then type in your pattern name right here. And then if you go over to pattern overlay here, it should appear here. So I have a few that I've tested with all different sizes and stuff. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a 3D background. So this is very simple. There's a few ways you can do this, but the easiest way is to just duplicate your layer, press command or control J on your layer and it'll duplicate. You can press on the text tool, go and click on your text and go to this 3D option. I believe this feature is discontinued and most of the 3D features in Photoshop don't work. You actually end up with something very nice like this. This. And then once you're done, you can go back to window, go back to the normal workspace, which is essentials. And now you end up with two different layers. You just want to move the 3D layer underneath the regular layer. Now you want to right click on the layer style and just copy it and then right click and rasterize this layer so that you can paste this layer style on it. 
Now to make additional adjustments, I'm going to right click and go to convert to smart object. And now we can do things such as adjust the hue and saturation of this. So I'm going to click this hue and saturation layer to the smart object and I'm going to lower the brightness. Now we end up with something like this and we're going to increase the saturation. And now we have a 3D layer. You can also make small adjustments like adding another point at the end. And this basically will just keep the text from looking flat. So at the end, I would go for like a lighter color. So we're going to go for a slightly light pink and we're going to do the same thing with the teal. If if you want to save this layer style just press new style in the blending options and then it should pop up in window styles and so right here we have our layer style i also made a retro text layer styles pack that you can check in the link in the description and it basically has different variations of this very same effect that i taught you today except i saved you some time and made a bunch of presets hopefully you enjoyed this video if you don't have photoshop yet you guys can check the link in the description for over 60 percent off the entire adobe creative cloud suite if you're a student or teacher also if you like this video make sure to check the end screen for a photoshop playlist for more videos just like this